This video is brought to you by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community for creative people where millions get to explore together. Skillshare has got thousands of classes. As artists, you're going to love discovering topics in fine art, illustration, and more. Lots of Skillshare classes are under 60 minutes. With short lessons, you can fit them into the busiest of schedules. I thought at first I was going to watch a Skillshare class about marketing, but actually, I ended up watching Storytelling for Leaders, How to Craft Stories That Matter with Keith Yamashita. Got me thinking that I could learn all the marketing skills that I wanted, but that actually, the heart of marketing is being able to tell a good story. Skillshare is also super affordable, and annual description is less than $10 a month. The first 500 of our subscribers to click this link, which is also in the video description below, will get a two-month free trial of premium membership so you can explore your creativity. Hello, I'm Professor Lou. Welcome to our live stream. I'm here today with art prof teaching artist Jordan McCracken Foster. Today we are doing a celebrity art critique. We're talking about Kanye West's high school artwork. I bet a lot of you guys had no idea that Kanye West was pretty into visual art when he was a high school student. If you would like to grow as an artist, but you can't afford an art class, we've got everything you need here at Art Prof, critiques and tutorials. Now, Jordan, I am going to admit that the only thing I really know about Kanye West is that he's married to Kim Kardashian and he's a rapper. And in fact, Jordan, you tried to play me some of his music and you were like, oh, I definitely think you know this. I didn't recognize any of it. <laughs> so. I think we need you, Jordan, to give a summary of who he is for those of you out there who are just as clueless as I am. Yeah, so uh, so Kanye West is, like Claire said, a rapper uh, from Chicago, and uh, he, he first came out in, in the early 2000s and put out a lot of uh, really influential music and the uh, hip hop. Uh, rap music, music scene, and he's inspired a lot of current artists today, like Dre and some of the current rappers. Uh, he is, in fact, married to Kim Kardashian, and and uh, also so people are uh, aware, probably aware of his erratic, erratic behavior as of late. Uh, he's uh, he's done being very outspoken, and uh, no one can really really make make sense of it. But he's a very unique individual, nonetheless, and, and so. Yeah, that's, <laughs> but mostly I'm sure know who he is. Anyway. I was telling Jordan, I feel really bad that I feel so judgmental of him because all I hear about is all the nutty things that he does because I don't pay attention to his music or him as an artist. So all I hear is the really negative press that he gets. And I feel bad about that because that seems sort of unfair because the more that I've talked to people about who he is, I'm like, wow, this guy sounds really interesting. I just wish that it were about his artistry and less about all these stunts that he seems to be doing all the time. Well, what got us turned on to Kanye's high school artwork is he was actually on this PBS TV show. Well, not he. The artwork was on this TV show called Antiques Roadshow. And if you're not familiar with this TV show, basically they have these auction appraisers who look at antiques that people bring in for appraisal. And it's a really funny show because half the time they're like, it's worth hundreds of thousands of dollars. And it's this silly little thing that people thought was just some tchotchke. Or sometimes people think it's super valuable and they're like, yeah, it's worth $50. <laughs> so it's a really funny show if you guys have never seen it before. But basically, Kanye's first cousin-in-law, whose husband inherited the collection of these drawings, they were part of the estate of Kanye's mother who passed away in 2007. And I actually read on this article that the artworks on Antiques Roadshow, they are considered to be worth between $16,000 and $23,000 for these five drawings. And on Antiques Roadshow, they say, quote, Kanye demonstrates an extraordinary facility as an artist. Jordan, would you agree 
with that appraisal of Kanye's high school artwork, let's start out by looking at this portrait. It's a gouache painting with this purple face, pretty stylized. What do you think? Is this extraordinary facility? I, I would not say so. Um, I think if I'm being totally honest, I think a lot of who he became and, uh, you know, the name, his name as a brand is so big and famous that of course they're going to say something like this about his artwork, but as, as it stands as of right now, I don't think it's all that phenomenal. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I'm going to have to agree with you, Jordan, because, okay, first of all, we have to remember, this is work he did in high school. This is not something he did recently, okay? So I'm definitely thinking about that. But as you guys know, all of us here at Art Prof, we look at high school artwork all the time. I've taught in pre-college programs. We review portfolios by high school students who are applying to art school. So trust me, we know what we're talking about when it comes to the skill set that we typically see for a high school student. And the thing is, he's not bad. I'm not saying he has no skill and he doesn't know what he's doing. It's just, it's not extraordinary facility. Like this gouache painting that we're looking at, it's not very refined. And I feel like the color choices are really boring because it's really monochromatic. What do you think about the color, Jordan? I, mean, I like purple and pinks mixed together, but that's about it. That, that's really, really the only thing I could say, and that's more of just more of just a personal thing more than what appears in the painting. Um, the the value could dark all over the place. That doesn't really uh, it doesn't really show the form as well as it could could uh now i can understand it's a face but that's about as far as i can really go when well my issue with the this. color is that he's not being very experimental with it he's doing the most obvious choices so usually what i see is when people are making a color and they say oh i want to make it lighter or oh i want to make it darker I think a lot of people and this makes sense their first impulse is oh well if i want to make it lighter let's add white if I want to make it darker, let's add black. And that can work sometimes. But I think what makes color more engaging is when you start making mixtures of colors that you don't expect to see together. And that's when the colors, I think, start to get really exciting. So for me, it falls pretty flat in terms of color. We've got some comments in the chat. And Ripple of Aqua is saying, oh my god, Kanye's stuff is antique. I guess they're using the word antique a little bit loosely on PBS because I don't really think of his high school artwork as being antique, but I guess it was good enough for a PBS. Nathan is asking, does he still make art today? Jordan, do you have an answer for that? Because I actually didn't look that up. Does he still make artwork? I, I doubt it. Um, I, I have no information on that. I know he still makes music, but but I mean that's a totally different kind kind of art. Well, so, but Jordan, uh, you said that actually he <laughs> has aesthetics today in his album covers that you actually saw a connection with in his high school pieces, like the graduation album cover that you mentioned to me. Yeah. So the the, the reason I brought brought that up is because when we look at the gouache posh painting, it's very graphic in, in terms of its shape. shape. It's, very, it's got these very sharp lines um, and very distinct shapes in the album cover, at least that uh, the appreciation for those things is magnified and it looks so much better as the album cover. But I think you can still see, still see hints of, of uh, what Kanye was going for uh, you know, even back then in the early, uh, in the mid nineties, uh, I will say though, Kanye did not make the album cover for graduation. Although I do think I'm sure he had a role in dictating what it looked like. Um, and by the way, Kanye, if you're listening, I really think you should watch our gouache tutorial because wow, you could learn something about how to layer your colors better because gouache is difficult. I think what's hard about gouache is that you can't paint over it without re-wetting the surface that's underneath. Like if you're painting with acrylic 
and it dries, you can just paint right over it. But with gouache, if you paint over it, you're actually going to reactivate the paint underneath. And Kanye, if you need some tips, you know where to go because Alex Rowe, who does this gouache painting tutorial, is outstanding. So anyway, if you ever feel like reviving that part of your creative life, we can give you a hand with that. <laughs> Keith Larson is saying, I'd say that 99% of the value of the art is the notoriety <laughs> of the artist. I think it somewhat depends on who the celebrity is because we're talking about Kanye West here. We have definitely looked at Miley Cyrus and Jim Carrey and it's different than being, say, an art world celebrity. So I think it depends on the type. Okay, so Jordan, we are now going to look at, Kanye has these two landscape pieces. So we're looking at this one as sort of like a close-up of a tree. And then we have a second piece, which is more like this green meadowy type of field. What's your first take on these two landscape drawings? Um, you know, I actually like these a lot better than the painting he did of the the, the last one we just looked at. Uh, I think that the colors are much better. He's actually starting to mix things a little bit. Uh, you can see in the the more vertical landscape with the the tree uh, that he's mixing the yellows, orange, browns, and stuff like that. And so I, I appreciate that a lot more. And I think that that's it's kind of funny. It's almost like Bob Ross uh, that he's painting these. Um, I just find that really amusing. Um, and the sec same goes for the second one. I think the colors are much better here than in the original that we looked at. Well, so this first one, I think, actually is the weaker of the two pieces. I think largely because, I guess when I think about creating a landscape, a big priority for me in a piece like that is to think about space and how to organize that sense of space. And this piece to me, because the tree is like right in front of you, it actually really gets in the way of your ability as a viewer to really travel deeper into that space. So I just feel like compositionally, this one's not doing as much as the other one in terms of space. Do, which one do you like better, Jordan? Is there one you prefer? I actually agree with you. I think that but the composition of the first one is is definitely a very rigid. It's you know smack dab in the middle and it's blocking all this stuff. Whereas in the one that's uh, it looks like it's got like a, a little river or something going through it or string that was successful in terms of color harmony and the location comp and composition. Let's see. Sterling Richards is saying, I wonder if Kanye took classes in high school or if he was self taught. I'm pretty sure he took classes because actually <laughs> there's this label here that actually came with the drawings. And I believe this was a label that was at the actual exhibition. It was his first art show back in 1995 when Kanye was 17 years old. And it's hilarious to read it because it says, I'm not going to read the whole thing. I'll just read the first part. Kanye Omari West, a 17 year old Atlanta born artist began his study of art at age four at the Hyde Park Art Academy. Since that time, he has studied art at the Art Institute of Chicago, Chicago State University, Nanjing University, and Polaris School for Individual Education. This fall, Kanye is gonna begin his studies for the BFA degree at the American Academy of Art in Chicago. Wow, that is pretty cool. And he also, by the way, wants to pursue a career as a music producer. <laughs> so I guess he was not self-taught. I mean, it sounds from, this description that he actually had a lot of training. Let's see, Albert is saying, definitely Kanye's yeah. talent is hardly in visual art. He is way more innovative in music. Do you think so, Jordan? Yes, definitely. Um, I mean, he's one of those people, one of those people that, uh, that I appreciate because he likes to get into different things. You know, I always like seeing people get into stuff. Clearly, his music is much uh, uh, more impactful, and he's and he's much stronger at that. Than but you know George. something? I think it's common, actually, for a lot of artistic people to have more than one field that they work in. Because I had a really good friend 
who was a gifted poet, I mean, wrote beautiful poetry, but she was also a ballet dancer. I thought that was the coolest thing. And I am primarily an artist, but for a long, long time, I played in an orchestra as an oboe player for a long time. I never wanted to go to music school. That never crossed my mind. But I love this idea of working in different genres of art because I think you can really enrich all your practices all together. Now, what I wanted to say about this second pastel drawing is that, Kanye, good job on your atmospheric perspective because <laughs> this is really cool. Does everybody see the purple leaves in the foreground, how large they are? So they really feel like they're close to you. And then this is a great compositional move. You have the river that goes upwards at a diagonal. And then in the upper left-hand corner, you have this white birch tree that tilts this way. And then these other trees, this is a really good composition, Jordan, and there's a great sense of space. So yes, the color could be better, but I'm very proud of his compositional skills because that is something I'm always bothering high school students about. Why do you think that is? I feel like nobody thinks about composition in high school for some reason. Uh, you know, I think composition is just one of those things that is is difficult to make. There's so many different pieces of art out there, with, out there with so many different compositions. It's almost hard to know where it starts sometimes. And uh, at least for me, I know it can get overwhelming. And you just kind of want to get to the fun stuff, which is doing all the details. But uh, it really, you know, like we said, our prof hundreds of times before. It really comes to doing your thumbnails and just picking these things out. Um, um, and you know, something I thought about. about Kanye, um, I remember hearing an interview where someone, where a lot of music artists didn't think he would amount to much when he first started, and it's almost sort of like his artwork doesn't really say a whole lot, but seeing who he is now is just kind of bizarre. <laughs> Let's see. Shaden is saying this one is fine, just average, only interesting because he's a celebrity. These are Goodwill type paintings. And Builder D says, to extend that idea, a lot of the best scientists were also high-level musicians, visual artists, authors, et cetera. They're all creative fields. Yep, I feel like it's just like learning another language. It can only enrich your experience as an artist. By the way, if you guys want to look at another artist who is really good at landscape, take a look at Wolf Kahn, because Wolf Kahn has a great way of simplifying the landscape and I love his color. His color is so weird. Like I just would never think about doing these crazy pinks and oranges and yellows, but he's got a really beautiful atmospheric quality to his paintings and mostly actually pastel drawings is what he mostly does, but he does paint as well that I think would be really great for you guys to take a look at. Okay, now we have these two graphite drawings. So this first one, is this woman, she looks like a cat to me. I don't know, who do you think she is, Jordan? <laughs> I I have no idea, idea. Um, but yeah, there is, there is something about her that looks very, very strange, strange. I, I can get into that later in the critique, I guess, but yeah, some of them is weird. To me, <laughs> this feels like the quintessential, I wanna draw a portrait, let's find a photo. Okay, I'm gonna copy it. I mean, back then in the 90s, we didn't have Google Images. You had to like save magazines and stuff. <laughs> and you had to like cut out pictures and things like that. It seems so prehistoric. But I just get the feeling this is one of those, okay, let's make it as close to the photograph as possible. And do you see he's nothing about composition? He's all in on the face. I think that's a big mistake as an artist. What do you think, Jordan? Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. You know, this, 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 what this feels like is he just like, all right, this one, bam, and just started going at it. And um, you know, I'll give him credit. The smile looks convincing. The smiles are really hard to do, but those eyes, those eyes, I can't. <laughs> um, oh my goodness, they're like cr cross-eyed. They're crooked. There's like all these things going wrong there, and um, oh. I wish I could draw This is it. one of those pieces. Do you, do you ever look at pieces sometimes and you're just like, oh my gosh, I don't even know where to begin. Like, there's just so many problems right now. 
oh yes that happens sometimes and uh i i get nervous because i'm like oh man how do i tell them this you know <laughs> it's just, well that's uh, why actually a lot of people stuff. i think sometimes there's a conception that teaching an advanced level class is the harder thing to do but i totally disagree i think teaching introductory the most basic level drawing class is the most difficult thing to do because it's like you don't even know where to begin there's just so much to cover and advanced level students it's like you don't have to cover any of that stuff you can actually get to the stuff that's fairly easy to teach and this this is really one of those situations where it's like oh my gosh there's just so much i have to explain to get this student going now, what about mm -hmm. the eyes specifically? Is it just how outliney they are, Jordan? Like, if you were to have Kanye in your class, what would you say to Kanye about how to fix the eyes? Okay, I would say, Mr. West, I think we need to fix these eyes here. Um, the main thing that bothers me about them is that they look more like symbols for eyes rather than actual eyes themselves. What I mean by that is, um, for whatever reason, pretty much anywhere on the earth, no matter what age, people who are inexperienced when it comes to drawing do the same type of eye, the same type of nose, same type of mouth, and um, and they don't look realistic. They look very flat. I think Kanye's kind of doing that here. Some shading underneath it to hide it or above it, you know, whatever you want to put it. But it, it's still showing through that those eyes just are flat, besides the fact that they're really crooked and they should be kind of doing like this but yeah <laughs> well i like to call them football eyes because i think what people yeah. forget about when they are drawing portraits is they they forget that actually there's an eyeball in there and i think what a lot of people just look at is they look at the shape of just the eyelids and you can't just go on that like you have to think about okay there's actually a form that is inside that is underneath those eyelids and that's what a lot of people they, they just don't take the time to conceptualize it that way and so it's a lot easier i think for people to just like trace the outline of the eye and that's how you end up with these eyes that look like i don't know lemons or something like that <laughs> yeah yeah there's definitely a difficulty in getting the eye to just wrap around because like you said it's an eyeball it's skin going over a ball and when you draw that you have to make sure you get um the the edges to look uh, to look accurate. Otherwise, it's going to end up looking like the lemon football eye like we just talked about. Well, another thing too is, so like at the ends of the eye, so here and also in here, people don't realize that that's where the eyeball is moving around. So you're actually going around that section. And so there's actually like a little pocket of space in there. And if you're painting somebody, there's usually like, you can see a little bit of pink tissue that's right next to the eyeball. And so I think that's the thing is people rely more on what they think it looks like and they don't really type the time to look really carefully at what is going on. Sterling Richards is saying, do you have a pastel video? Need to figure out how to use the medium without it getting out of control, messy, sloppy, and smudged. We do not have a pastel video yet. I eventually definitely want to get one. I can give you a couple of pieces of advice because actually we can go back. <laughs> Let's use Kanye as a reference here for the pastel video. So what I'm seeing in Kanye's technique is that he is not layering enough. I really think soft pastel, the success of it is in the layering so that there are some pockets where it's very, very thin and maybe smudgy. And then are your areas where you're really pushing hard. So you have to learn to vary the pressure, the physical pressure of what you're using with the pastels. And I think a lot of people, they get really, really smudgy. Like they want to blend and blend and it, it becomes a muddy mess. So I would just say, try to not smudge so much, try to be more direct, vary the pressure and look at Edgar Degas and Mary Cassatt and Odilon Redon. Those are three quintessential pastel artists. And if you can analyze their technique, that will help you quite a bit. All right, let's take a look at what I think, by the way, is my favorite out of Kanye's drawings from high school. What do you think about this drawing, Jordan? You know, 
knowing a little bit about Kanye West's music and what he would produce later on, it just feels like what will be on his album for uh, my beautiful dark twisted fantasy the album came out within 2010 and it's just really bizarre artwork on the cover i can't even really describe it because it's very nsfw but <laughs> um it just feels like it just feels similar it's just really strange um you know i like where it could be heading but there's a lot of issues with the value the flat eyes are happening again um the, I do find the nose and lips very interesting, though. I, I I can't turn my eyes away from it, I will admit, but <laughs> it's very bizarre. Well, speaking of technique, actually, you guys are in luck because earlier today I did a live drawing stream. It was really fun. I got to look at Benedict for about an hour and 25 minutes. It was a great way to spend my time. And then I spend the evening watching Sherlock again because I cannot get enough of that show. Have you watched that show before, Jordan? I, I have not, but I'm sure you could tell me all about it. <laughs> what is wrong with you? Oh my gosh, this is just... Well, then again, I don't know anything about Kanye. So maybe this is just you getting back at me. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Yes, that's it. That's. <laughs> anyway, in this live drawing stream, I use many different types of pencils. I use a regular pencil. I use a woodless pencil. Actually, I've got them right here. And so here's just a regular pencil. And then the woodless pencil, if you guys take a look at it, you can see there's, well, no wood. <laughs> and so it's like a bigger pencil and you can make a broader stroke. And then I also use these jumbo graphite sticks. And they're funny because people oftentimes think that they're charcoal, but they're not. They're just really big ass graphite sticks. And you can get very rich, dark values, which you can see in this thumbnail here. And if we go back, and we look at Kanye's drawing, you can see the value is not happening. I mean, it's so gray, which becomes a problem because you know something? He's got some cool stuff in this drawing, but a lot of it's very hard to see. Like, what is one area, Jordan, that you think would benefit from stronger contrast? Uh, definitely the top of the head where the horns are. Um, and I guess those are horns. Um, to be honest, I'm not exactly sure what they are, but they're there's growths on, on the top of the head. Um, they're very, very gray. They're blending with the background too much, and uh, it's causing everything to flatten out. So I would definitely increase the contrast there. You know something, though? I really like the background. The background is cool, and I yeah. love how it's integrated into the collar. Like, that is a really complicated background. I mean, okay, fine. He needed to work on the value, and he should have known to diversify his pencil tools. But th this is a drawing, he spent a lot of time on this. Like, can't you see the focus and the concentration in his pencil technique? Oh, definitely. And actually, I think my favorite part is um, like the collar and going into the shoulders. Um, I feel like there's so much detail going into that. And he really thought about how the chains were connecting and how they would go into the background. Uh, so yeah, this, this feels like something he put, you know, his blood, sweat and tears into for sure. I mean, like one area where I would want like a deep black is right underneath the chin. So we really could feel the dramatic space around that collar. That would be really fantastic. And yeah. OK, I love the background, but the head could be better, which is why, Kanye, we have for you tips on how to compose a portrait. And if you watch this video, you'll see that there's a lot you can do with a portrait. I have a lot of times I'll assign a portrait in my class and the students will say, well, it's just a portrait. So there isn't really anything that I can do. Like a lot of people tend to think that a portrait is a very limited image, but depending on who you're drawing and the style and everything that you're doing, you can really do a lot. So Kanye, we got you covered. If, if you need to, you know, step into another artistic realm, we can give you a hand in that area. Okay, let's take another look at some artists who are somewhat similar. And it's so funny because Guillermo Harrison is saying he's a modernistic Giuseppe Ar Ar Archimboldo. I don't know how to pronounce his name. <laughs> Making eyes out of oysters, teeth out of Tic Tacs. You know what? You must have read my mind, Guillermo, because look at who we have in the stream for you. We have Archimboldo right here because I looked at Kanye's piece 
And I don't know, there was something about those horns popping out and the ears and the multi-layered eyes. I was like, okay, we got to show Archim Boldo. I think that's such a funny coincidence. What do you think about these paintings, Jordan? They're so weird. I I will echo that statement. They are so weird. Uh, <laughs> but they are really creative, actually. They, it makes me laugh when I see it, actually. Cause, and I try to pinpoint like everything that you use like oh that's a grape oh that's a you know cherry it's just like that's kind of fun actually you know something i don't know if you guys have seen but there's this project going along it's circulating amongst all the art teachers where they assign the students to find a famous painting and then recreate it using any objects and my daughter got that project she's in middle school and she was having trouble picking a piece. And I'm like, I know what we're going to do. We're going to do Archimboldo because I can just empty my fridge and you can just arrange all the food. And there you go. I was feeling so proud that she could take advantage of my art history knowledge. <laughs> it's really funny. But anyway, you guys should look at his work because he doesn't always do food. Like here's another one that like Gularam is saying, there's like pearls and an octopus and there's a crab in there. I mean, he's such a weirdo. I'm like, you are so ahead of your time. I mean, guys, these paintings were made in 1566. That is incredible to me that this guy was like so far ahead of his time. Let's see, Ripple of Aqua saying, the face makes me so think that it. someone had too much fun with customizing their Sims character. <laughs> Step away and see the big picture coming. <laughs> Let's see. MCC is saying the flat eyes is what ruins it. Yeah, the face is sort of the least interesting part of this portrait to me, Jordan. What do you think? You know, I think, I don't know if it, I would say the least interesting, but it definitely could be pushed further, you know, because you know, the proportions and how much he's exaggerating, like I said, the lips and, and like, there's no Filtrum at all. For those who don't know, Filtrum is this little... This little thing. You know, ...divot between the nose and the lips. But, you know, those features are, you know, uh, exaggerate. But you're, you're right. Uh, the eyes are really deadening the whole whole thing. And it, it just feels like someone just slapped a sticker on it. And um, it's unfortunate. The rest of the piece is pretty... Dead. I really like the horns. The horns are cool. Yeah. First of all, there's different kinds of horns. Like there are these two little short ones at the top that are actually kind of cute. And then there's like, what, like four? There's like two really long ones. There's one that's like covering an eye. There's one, like that is a very sculptural way of composing a face, which I think is really cool. I do think the ear maybe looks a little too similar. I sort of feel like I'd like the ear to look a little more skin-like or a little flabbier. Like, I, I really think, okay, if I were Kanye in high school, I would have looked up images of ram's horns or maybe even moose horns or something, something that could really get me to show the textural difference because the ear to me is just really stiff. Like, if you think about an ear, an ear has a lot of cartilage. It's a little bit flimsy. So, yeah, I think he definitely could have done more than that. Okay. Um, let's see, Gularm is saying, I've been watching so many videos, I began talking like you. My friends are like, why are you saying you have critiques and tutorials before every sentence? <laughs> wow, I guess we are seeping into your brain, Gularm. <laughs> MCC is saying, I just That's realized so awesome. the eyes are attached to tentacles coming out of his eye sockets. Maybe it's supposed to represent a fake eye. Oh, that's interesting. You're seeing them as tentacles. I actually looked at them and I was thinking about them as horns, but I guess they could be tentacles as well because they're not that specific about the surface. Jordan, what do you think that little floaty thing on the left-hand side in the middle is? It could be like some sort of like candle holder or like a teapot. I know those are two very different things, <laughs> but that's the first thing I thought of. I'm actually not quite sure. Uh, <laughs> it's so random. Like, I don't know what that's uh, supposed to be. I don't, I don't... Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't know, but I, I really okay. don't know. Um, 
<laughs> um, guys, we have an art prof share, which is always super fun to show <laughs> off what you guys are making in response to our videos. We are going to look at this wonderful mixed media piece. It's by Jordan Smith. You can check out Jordan's Instagram. And Jordan's artist statement is also in the video description below. So if you guys want to take a look at that. Basically, Jordan talks about how they were watching a lot of videos and they looked at examples of lots of portfolios. They wanted to make an experimental self-portrait, unlike they had ever done before. Jordan explains that it's one of the most challenging yet fun pieces they ever made. They really just went in blindly with a bunch of materials, including coffee, and just went for it. Jordan explains that they got the idea of coffee from the home art supply video, which, by the way, if you guys want to check that out, it's called Art Supplies Hidden in Your Home. It's with myself, Eloise, and Lauren. And she also says she got the idea from jo uh, Lauren's tutorial. So this is another one where Lauren does all these really cool textured acrylic painting techniques. And I think you guys can see really well the beautiful texture that Jordan got to achieve in their piece. Jordan, what's your take on Jordan's piece? <laughs> I, <laughs> I'm trying to see it. I um, My internet my iPad's really low. Oh, okay, now I got it. Okay, hold on. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah, I've been waiting to see you. I've been hearing the description. Now, I think it's really unique. I love the texture, especially in the hair. I think that's really neat. And the play you're uh, describing the play. Good job, Jordan. I'm not just saying that because you have the same Yeah, <laughs> I really like this piece a lot because there are certain pieces of it that are really, really meticulous, like the hair as Jordan McCracken Foster was saying. <laughs> There's two Jordans here. Um, but also the texture that's in the background is super gritty and really, really cool. So nice work, Jordan. We love seeing what you guys do. If you guys would like to share with us what you have made in relation to our videos, just go to tutorials and project ideas on artprof.org. There is a purple button on the left-hand side and it will take you to the Art Prof Share submission form. And if we end up selecting your piece, we'll give you a shout out, one of our YouTube videos. Or if you just wanna show us and not submit for a YouTube shout out, you can just tag us on Instagram and use hashtag Art Prof Share. We might share on our story or something, but we love seeing what you guys make. It's super fun for us. So I hope some of you will consider that. Come hang out with us on Discord. It has now become an Art Prof ritual. We go hang out on Discord after the live stream because sometimes you guys have questions or comments that maybe we didn't get to during the live stream. So we will see you guys over there. Subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to make sure you don't miss out on anything. And thank you so much to our top Patreon supporters who make all of this possible. Thank you to all of you guys for your wonderful comments. Oh, and Jordan is in the chat. How cool. Jordan Smith not Joe McFoe. <laughs> Let's see, Jordan's saying, thank you for sharing. I've learned so much from your channel. Well, thank you, Jordan, for sharing your work with us. Everybody, please stay safe. We will see you next time. Bye.